Hello and welcome to Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. My name is Kelly and I'm a former wedding planner and blogger and I'm obsessed with weddings. If you're planning a wedding in Ireland, you're in the right place. You're going to learn the tried and tested methods to planning your dream wedding without the added stress. Think of this as your one-stop shop for everything to do with planning your wedding in Ireland. With me, your new wedding planning bestie and a cup of tea. This is Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. Well, hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. You might hear that I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm not planning on doing a whole lot of talking today, which is just as well because I happen to have five amazing experts who are joining me in this episode, and they're going to share all the tips that you need. But let's get started. Believe it or not, just showing up on the morning of your wedding is not enough for you to be fully prepared. In fact, there are a few things that your makeup artist really wants you to do or at least think about before your big day. So we're going to go through those things. I've got five amazing makeup artists who are going to pop in and share their expertise and they're going to walk you through exactly what you need to do or think about before your wedding day so that you are fully prepared and you feel relaxed and you look your absolute best on your wedding day. Let's get started with item number one. So the first thing that your makeup artist really wants you to do before your big day is to have a makeup trial. So to help unpack why this is important and what you can expect, I've spoken to Maria from Allure. She's going to give us a little bit more information. So take a listen to this. Hello, um, my name is Maria Shartova and I trade under Allure Bridal Milk Artist and today I would like to briefly answer a commonly asked question by the brides-to-be and that is should you or why should you have a makeup trial? Um, in years of uh, working in this industry there definitely was few brides who couldn't have their trials simply because um, they live abroad or they chose their makeup artist and they just simply fully trust them. This is definitely just a small percentage of brides to be and most brides definitely do want their makeup trial. Um, The reasons could differ slightly from I never wear makeup and in this case we work together to create a beautiful natural look so that the bride feels comfortable wearing or it could be that the bride has some skin imperfections um, and she wants to make sure they're covered flawlessly for the big day and many times it's the case that the bride wants to meet their suppliers in person if possible Uh, at the end of the day um, the whole wedding is created by the couple and for the couple so getting to know your makeup artist at your trial that bit more is always a good idea they will be around a big portion of your wedding morning so i think knowing that they're friendly easygoing and accommodating is also very important So from whatever angle you look at it, I think it all comes down to having a peace of mind that your makeup will look great and it lasts until early hours and that there is a good vibe between you and your makeup artist. So should you have your bridal makeup trial? Most definitely yes. Well, I happen to agree with Maria that having a makeup trial is an amazing thing to do. It's definitely something that makeup artists recommend. So if you haven't booked in your makeup trial, you should definitely do that. And a little bit later in this episode, we'll hear from another expert about what you can think about before the trial and how you can be fully prepared for that too. But we'll come to that in a moment. The next thing that your makeup artist really wants you to do is to prepare your skin the night before your wedding. And you might be thinking what does that mean? What should I do? Do I need to get anything? Should I avoid anything? Well, I spoke with Zoe Clark and she's given us all the details of exactly what you should do and not do the night before your wedding. So take a listen to this. Hi, this is Zoe Clark. I'm just answering a question. What should a bride do the night before or the morning of her wedding to prepare her skin for the following day? So I think one of the first things I would say is not to drink too much alcohol the night before a wedding. I know it's quite tempting, (laughs) particularly when all the guests arrive, but I do find that brides have difficulty sleeping sometimes with all the excitement and having a few drinks can sometimes knock their sleep out even more. Um, 
Also, I would suggest sometimes as well to my brides, look, if you can get something to help you sleep that doesn't make you drowsy the following day, all the better. Um, because again, it's a bit like um, the night before Christmas Day. Whenever you're a kid, it's <laughs> the excitement and all the people arriving and sometimes the anxiety as well can knock off your sleep pattern, which again will affect your skin and make you feel a bit tired the next day. Um which of course is normal. And um, the other thing I would suggest is, you know, uh, cleanse your face properly, put on your moisturizer. Don't be going too mad. I wouldn't be, I would suggest not um, putting mad, mad sort of, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for, facials or anything like that too soon before a wedding in case it brings you out and blemishes. Um, and not to drink too much water the night before either in case you're up throughout the night going to the toilet <laughs> just enough um so cleanse moisturize try to get a good night's sleep if you can the morning of the wedding again same thing just get up um have your breakfast take it easy and um a little bit of water cleanse and tone but again the makeup artist should be able to do all that at the morning of the wedding um Again, things like dry lips, I always recommend Elizabeth Arden Atar Cream if you have a lot of dryness, just to pop that on. But again, a makeup artist will help with all of that, if necessary, on the morning. So that's my advice. Okay, thanks very much. Bye. Thank you so much, Zoe, for sharing those expert tips on everything to do the night before the wedding and the morning of. We actually have an amazing podcast episode all about all the other things to do the night before the wedding, so you're fully prepared and relaxed, and I will pop a link to that in the notes for this episode. But moving on to item number three, when you're thinking about the morning of your wedding, your makeup artist really wants you to consider the timeline and exactly what the morning of the wedding will look like, because what you don't want to do is to get there and wing it. And then everybody's stressed because nobody knows who's having their hair done, who's having their makeup done, how much time it's going to take, and if you're going to be ready for the ceremony. So I spoke with Christina O'Connor and she shared how to plan out the wedding morning timeline so that you know that you're going to fit everything in and you're going to be relaxed by the time you get to your ceremony. So this is what she had to say. So there are a number of things that will affect your timeline and your start time of your morning. Number one is your ceremony time. So when you're considering your ceremony time, think about how many people you have included for hair and makeup, as well as if there's any travel time needed to the ceremony. If you're having a large party with an early ceremony and travelling to the ceremony, then you will be up well before dawn. When you book your makeup artist, they will be able to give you then their specific timing and their start time. It will differ per artist depending on their time per face, their setup time, if they need breaks for brush cleaning, etc. And you will need time between glam being finished and your leaving time so that you can all get dressed to have touch-ups and have photos without rushing. And that brings me to my next point, which is check with your photographer. They will have their own timeline and may even provide you with a schedule. And if so, do forward this to your glam team so that they can adjust their start time accordingly as well. Then if you do decide to have first looks, make sure you are notifying your glam team as well as your photographer you can provide your makeup artist with your new leaving time so that the start time then can be adjusted accordingly another thing that can affect your start time is your trial a trial is highly recommended but if for some reason it wasn't possible your start time will probably be a little bit earlier to allow the artist more time with you in terms of the running order on the morning, you don't need to create an exact timeline for each person. There can be unexpected delays or unexpectedly running ahead, so often these end up going out the window. Your makeup artist and your hairstylist will coordinate on the morning to keep the flow going. Often the bride isn't taken first or last for makeup, so ideally somewhere in between depending on your numbers and when your hairstylist needs you. The main decision to be made is who goes first. For makeup, I often find it's best to start with a bridesmaid and whichever bridesmaid has the most preferences for the makeup. So whether you're giving the bridesmaids a set look or loose guidelines, do have a chat with them to see if anyone does have any specific preferences. And if so, I would start with them so that the artist can create some more cohesiveness across the group. But most importantly, whoever is going first, make sure they know and they know what time to be there for. Anyone arriving late or taking a while to get themselves sorted if they've just found out they're first will create a knock-on effect for the morning. So what might you be doing while you're waiting for your glam? You can get your dress and your details ready for your photographer when they arrive. Having these ready before you sit down for glam means you won't have to keep hopping in and out of the chair to grab items. And if you are exchanging gifts or letters with your partner, I would aim to open these before you were having your makeup done, just in case there are a few tears you could ball away without having to worry about your makeup. And generally, anything you think can be done last minute, popping things into your bag, popping bags into the car, giving payment envelopes to suppliers, the morning does fly by and the later it gets, the busier it gets. So tick off as many of your little jobs earlier in the morning as you can. And lastly, the one thing to do throughout the morning is have fun. As I say, it does fly by, so take it all in, go with the flow and enjoy every minute. 
Well, that was amazing. So informative. So thank you very much to Christine O'Connor for unpacking what the morning timeline could look like and how to plan accordingly. We're going to move on to our final um, our final item before wrapping up at the end. But the final item is to buy some of your products ahead of time so you can keep them with you on the day. Um, you might be surprised to hear that, but I spoke to Laura Davides and she helped us to understand a little bit more what type of products you should buy with some helpful recommendations of brands that she really loves. So take a listen to this. Hi, my name is Laura Davides. I'm a wedding makeup artist based in the Dublin Wicklow area. When it comes to makeup touch-up advice, I always recommend the Mini Charlotte Tilbury Powder to my clients. It has four great colors and it doesn't sit on the skin. I also recommend for you to have your wedding day lipstick on hand to touch up throughout the day. Get the name from your makeup artist after the trial or buy it from your artist to make sure you have the right color. The best tip is to keep your lipstick in the groom's pocket or in your chief bridesmaid's bag so you have easy access to it at any time. Sometimes, if your skin is too dry, I would also recommend that you have some beauty mist like MAC Fix Plus, Charlotte Tilbury or maybe Amy Connolly Hydrate and Hold to give your makeup a boost at the end of the night. The most important thing I tell every bride is, if at any stage you need to dry or touch your face after some happy tears or dancing sweat, is to not rub or drag, but always dab and your makeup should be fine. It's amazing. Thank you so much to Laura for sharing her expert tips on products that you need before the big day. And to wrap up this episode, I have an amazing summary from Sarah Duffy. She helps us to understand a little bit more about the wedding makeup trial, things that you need to think about before the trial, some inspiration that you need to consider, and a little bit more about your skincare routine. So have a listen to this as we wrap up the episode. Things your makeup artist wants you to do before your wedding. So once you've paid your deposit, you've got your date secured, get your trial booked in. Ideally, this would be four to six months before your wedding, but your makeup artist may do trials at particular times of the year. Uh, I know myself, I do them sort of January to March time, and then again, October to November time when things are a bit quieter with the weddings. For the trial itself, just be as prepared as possible. Arrive fresh-faced with your normal skincare applied. If you can wear white or cream, that really helps. Um, have loads of photos just bring loads of photos along so whether that be of your dress your veil your accessories the flowers the bridesmaids dresses just to help create sort of like a mood board of the wedding day um, if you are going to have your hair sort of half up half down or in a ponytail try to sort of create that yourself um, on the day of the trial and this all just helps everything come together um, if you're planning on wearing um, tan on your wedding day then ideally get that done uh, two days before the trial just to see kind of tones and everything and how they all come out um, again bring on loads of inspo pics so um, whether it be bridal looks that you like have a look at your your makeup artist's instagram see kind of the looks they've created and pick out things that you like that will help the makeup artist um, see kind of the, the, the look that you want to create and to make sure that you're kind of both on the same page really if you're planning on having a lash lift um, do let your makeup artist know because that w again w could affect the look that you create um, once you've had the trial don't be afraid to take loads of pictures see how it works for you see how it lasts see what you like um, and you know feed back to your makeup artist tell her that you love certain bits or you want to change certain bits there's no harm in that and, and they'll actually be really appreciative of that um, in terms of skincare I always advise brides to just get a really good home skincare routine going. So just cleansing twice a day, moisturising twice a day. If they can exfoliate a couple of times a week, do some face masks, give Dermaplane a go at home, and this will all help just prep the skin for the wedding day. Because the better the skin is prepped, the better it's going to be on the wedding day, the better the makeup's going to sit and the better it's going to photograph. Depending on your budget, um, you may... Um, be able to get some facials or some peels and get some sort of skincare advice from a specialist. This, again, is obviously going to help you um, in terms of creating the best skincare you can. Um, the old cliche of drinking loads of water, you know, it's always going to help. Your skin is never going to regret drinking loads and loads of water. Um, if you're having tan for the wedding, again, get that done a couple of days before the, the wedding. I mean, in terms of the wedding day itself, just we all, would always love a little bit of space, uh, a natural light set up, a table to set out our kit, and just enough space to work comfortably. Um, most makeup artists will have a light with them, so they just need a power socket for that. And that's pretty much it. 
Well, today's wedding makeup experts have shared so much advice. This episode has been jam-packed with loads of expert tips, and you might be feeling a little overwhelmed with all the things you need to think about. What's going to help you is if you have a look at the written summary of this episode so you can refer back to it as you start to plan everything to do with wedding makeup. So if you visit weddingsonline.ie forward slash blog, all our podcast episodes come along with a written breakdown just to help you remember all the information at hand. Well, a huge thank you to Maria Schartova from Allure, Zoe Clark, Christine O'Connor, Laura Davides, and Sarah Duffy for sharing amazing expert advice in today's episode. And thank you for listening today. The Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online podcast is produced by me, Kelly, and mixed, mastered, and edited by Glenn Hartman. For more wedding planning tips, advice, checklists, and more, visit weddingsonline.ie.